Hello friends, just a quick video. Selling stuff on eBay. Sometimes uh, things happen to packages. And I, uh, yeah. So this is a GoTech, I sell them on eBay. And um, this is how it showed up to the, to the customer, the buyer. I have a black one for reference. This is what it's supposed to look like. And here's the carnage. Here's the OLED display, completely destroyed, smushed. I, I think they ran over this. I think the Postal Service ran over this. I, I can't even think of a person like, even if a person stomped on this, they wouldn't have done this much damage. Look at the rotary encoder. Of course, a bunch of pieces. So, I wonder if this is savable. Um, this post broke off in here and maybe a little bit difficult to remove. It's still got the screw in it, I think. There we go. Got it. Yeah, look at that. Something mushed that plastic with great, with great force. Hundreds of pounds, I would say. <laughs> there we go. So. I should probably see if this thing works first. Before I proceed, but it's got a, a bad switch here. That one's okay. And the USB port is completely thrashed. Geez, if it wasn't for the fact that the USB port was thrashed, this would be kind of an easy fix. Yeah, so I'm going to need another rotary encoder assembly. Um, actually, this doesn't even have it. I, I could replace this. I have rotary encoders. So another USB port. And I have an OLED. This is a 0.96 OLED. I think I have one of those laying around. Anyway, let's go give this thing a test. Those are 0.91, which I could use to test with, I guess. Other one, ooh, I think, isn't that a 0.96? Seems a little big. Anyway, let me get one of these out. Yeah, I think I have it connected right, hopefully. <laughs> Let's see if the smoke, magic smoke comes out of it. Nope, the thing works perfectly. Yep, it's even giving us the Amiga click sound on the speaker that I installed. So uh, yeah, let's rebuild this thing. This is interesting. Um, it makes sense logically. I never looked into it before, but here's the GoTech OLED. These are both the same size. They're both 0.96 um, OLED screens, but GoTech has had this made custom from for them. The circuit board is smaller, although yeah, and the connections have been moved from from down here to the side so that it can have a lower profile and fit in the case. So um, yeah, that's pretty interesting. And also the, the actual connectors are not in the same order so that because you used to have to flip one of the, the, uh, the cables coming out of the GoTech, you used to have to flip one, one of them is flipped, not right now, going into this 1.2 OLED. And they've had it, uh, the, the pins reversed, I think it's the power and the ground have been reversed so that you can just plug straight in. I mean, why not if you're having somebody make you um, a custom OLED to make it easier for, for uh, assembly production?
negative part of that is, is that I can't use one of these point standard 0 0.960 LEDs because it won't fit in a GoTek case. So I have two choices. Either next time I order GoTex from the manufacturer, I ask them to send me a couple extra OLEDs, or I put a 0.91 in, one of those skinny ones, which wouldn't really fit properly. So I think we're going to have to go for getting a, uh, a replacement from the manufacturer. Well, as it turns out, I had one anyway. So we're going to be good. We're going to be good to go here. Okay, well, um, I do actually see some capacitors and resistors on this board under here. So maybe we should try to install this onto this board or at least connect it here. Yeah, well, let me, I guess let me desolder this. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of reverse engineering to find out where where they were at uh, when they designed this um, and compare it to the notes um, I have for adding a rotary encoder to a GoTech, which, by the way, you can find on my website, retrofriends.com. Um, yeah, so let me just do a little bit of investigating here. Okay, yeah, I figured it out. So... As you can see, where's my pointy device? Um, these two are linked together. So this one is gonna be, and it is indeed a ground. It's not just the common, but it's also the ground. So, so that's the ground and the common, and this is the push button for um, selection, the selection push button. So um, I'm going to, and so I have these two linked together. which they, they did internal to the switch. Their switch is designed to have that done internally. So I, I this switch is not internally done that way. So I'm gonna to have to do it manually. So there's our ground. I should probably see if this, this whole thing will fit in there together. I, I guess this board doesn't need to be, it can hang back from from here it doesn't have to go into its post if this doesn't all fit together most important thing is to get the rotary encoder in in its place all right so now we're dealing with the switch should put an affiliate link for those wire strippers in the description of this video these wire strippers it's, it's hard to strip wires with any kind of, you know, convenient strippers when, when it's 30 gauge wire. But um, I found that if you push down on the dies, you can get it to, to do it. So I'm just so used to doing that at this point. So I can strip any wire with those wire strippers, any wire. And I suspect this middle one is not being used. Indeed, it doesn't go anywhere. So I have a video, if you don't know already, on how to modify um, GoTeks that don't have a screen, an OLED screen, I should say. They come with LED screens sometimes. They traditionally did until GoTek made uh, a change and ma made ones themselves. All right, so as far as which one of the, oh, I was telling about the video. So the video, you know, look look at my channel for, for a full video on modding a GoTech with a rotary dial encoder, which is much more convenient than a couple push buttons that it comes with. And uh, also adding the OLED screen, which is nice. I definitely want to do these in two different colors because if I want to reverse them, that's going to make it easy. Just tinning the wire. Tin the connections. These are the rotary encoder, actual 
encoder connections here. Not the neatest uh, soldering job I've ever done. Sorry that, that it's off to the side a little bit, but it's just really tough for me to do this with the camera unless I'm off to the side a little bit. But I want you get I want to get you in close, so I don't want to move the camera that way. The flux has burned out of it. Now it's kind of globby globby. But it'll work. It's not the neatest work in the world, but Okay, that should do it. Just make sure we're not shorted since I get, I'm going to cut the excess off when I'm done. Actually, I could cut it off now because that won't affect my ability to flip flop. So if I turn the rotary encoder and the display goes in the wrong, you know, it goes from three to two to one, and when I'm dialing it up, then we know we need to flip those two. And of course, there is a, a way for you to change that in, if you program the GoTech, but I'd rather obey my OCD and go ahead and do it the right way, wiring-wise, because I tend to not leave my GoTechs on. This, this one's obviously going to stay here. I can't sell it in this condition, but it's going to work perfectly, and I'm going to put it in a, an extra case that I have for a GoTech have those two a couple of them anyway all right let's give this a try all right so here we're going to go ahead and test turn it on we're still working all right so i know that when i turn it to the right once it's supposed to go to factory reset oh i'm supposed to hit the button first now i'm in the menu so that works factory reset yep so I think I have it right. I think I have it right. So we just need to get a hold of a USB port and solder it in there. And then we'll be uh, able to reassemble it and put it back together. You know, I, I, I ordered the USB connectors, but you know what? I managed to get that one kind of tweaked back into position. So we're going to give a try. And I was, as I suspected, this board and this rotary encoder don't don't play nice next to each other so that board that daughter board was pushed back a little bit so the only other thing we need to do is bend this little guy down just a hair to line up with the other about right let's try that I have to put the rotary encoder in first because of the limited cable uh, limited jumper length I can't put the board in first okay it's a little bit tweaked there we go. Let's get it nice and tight because there's not really anything holding it in there besides friction. Okay, and these two buttons that were both kind of messed up, they actually still snap when you hit them. But you know what? I don't ever use those anyway, so I'm not actually going to worry about those. Yeah. So maybe hot melt glue this thing in here. Or, yeah, that's pretty, pretty tight where it is. I don't think it's making any connections uh, that it shouldn't be. Okay, that looks good. Let's put the screw in here. Sticks out a little more than the uh, than the others, but 
But if it works, it looks pretty good. Only the keen eye would notice a difference. And there we go. Let's see if we can plug our USB in there. Is it right? No, it's not right. Do this one handed. First time's going to be tough because I'll have to. I need to tweak something there. The bottom part needs to be bent down. Okay, let's see. It's a little bit tight. I've ordered the replacement USB. Okay, let's see if it works. Yep, it sure does. Like a charm. Just loaded Amiga test kit. Scrolling through the images. Yep. Perfect. Fixed. Thanks for watching, friends, and we'll see you next time.